In this video, we're going to take a look at how to work out um, the geometry of any geodesic dome. Most people, when they see a geodesic dome, especially the, something like this, fairly complicated, this is the biosphere at Montreal. All you see is a mass of struts in triangle forms. And it's like, how do you even work out what that is? There's this, there is a very simple uh, method to work out exactly what the parent polyhedron is and if you know what the basic geometry is it's then you're at least the first step down the road to working out how to make it uh, so let's take a look at um, my upcoming book uh, this is on my computer at the minute uh, hopefully i'm going to get this finished for next year so keep an eye out for this next year right all geodesic domes all domes of of any kind have a base polyhedra icosahedron dodecahedron octahedron cube or tetrahedron uh, we can rule out the tetrahedron because it's too basic and we can also rule out the cube because that's built used for square building so it's only really one of these three platonic solids that we use to build domes now you can build domes using other methods but today i'm just going to look at um geodesics which are based on these three polyhedrons even though it's super complicated this would have had a base polyhedron of one of the kinds that we just looked at so what we've got to do is work out which one it is in the book i've got a page a couple of pages actually which show the uh, relationship between the platonic solids uh, in two groups there's the octahedron and then there's the icosahedron and dodecahedron this is octahedron let's have a quick look at that and mo there's not very many domes use um, octahedron based uh, they'll all have a square somewhere on them let's zoom in and see if we can find it on the on these here drones yeah um, this is how they uh, originate from a tetrahedron because all polyhedrons can be generated from a tetrahedron so you, you're looking at jewels uh, rectified so number five in the book it shows you it tells you all what these um are and how to how to get them let's look at this one this is a octahedron two frequency three frequency if you have a quick look though cl let's go close you'll see that there's a square on this and that's how you know that this is a octahedron base because they'll have square faces somewhere on them it's triangular but it adds up to a square Right, if we move on to icosahedron and dodecahedron geometry, this is the family to that. If we look at the top, tetrahedron, snubification gets you the icosahedron and the dodecahedron is the jewel of that. So um, this is where most geodesic domes are made. They're either icosahedron or dodecahedron, but people mix them up and they can't tell the difference between one and the other. We'll sort that out for you today. It's not that difficult. The rule is uh, dodecahedron has the um, pentagons in that structure back to back. We call that back to back. Uh, icosahedron has them point to point and then snub dodecahedron has them at a slight twist. You can see that they're not exactly opposite each other. We're not going to worry about that because snub dodecahedron isn't used that often. It's mostly either this, uh, either the um, dodecahedron or the icosahedron. Uh, on the um, octahedron, there would be point to point, and tetrahexahedron is um, back to back. But again, these are not commonly used, so we're not going to look at them today. Okay, let's look back at the. Um, biosphere in Montreal the one that was impossible to work out and if we look we could have colored in the pentagons so I've got there's two pentagons close-ish to each other and I've colored them in so you can see them more clearly uh, you, you can tell everything you need from this drawing now you can see that those pentagons are point to point so that makes this an icosahedron based and if you count these struts one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen you count the struts from the center of one pentagon to the center of the other and that gives you the frequency so the montreal biosphere is a 16 frequency icosahedron based dome let's 
take a look at some others. Okay, let's have a look at the Eden Project. Now the Eden Project doesn't have triangles, it has hexagons and pentagons. You can see a pentagon there. But because it's got pentagons, you can still see that it's um, a ge geodesic form. So what we need to do with uh, something that's what I call it honeycomb open framework, but inside that, if we were to triangulate these honeycombs, um, we could make a geodesic dome as normal out of it. So what you have to do then is you again you look at the pentagons. You can see that uh, the, the pe pentagons on this one are point to point, so th that makes this an icosahedron based dome. And again, you count from the center of one to the other, so it's one, two three into the middle of a hexagon, four down the edge, five again into the middle for six and seven, eight, nine. That's a, uh, So that Eden Project, this part of the uh, Eden Project is a nine frequency icosahedron based dome. Let's do another one just to prove that there are different types of dome. This is the Epcot Center. Now if you look at this one, um, I've highlighted the pentagons again and this time they are back to back. So this one is a dodecahedron based. Uh, again, you, uh, instead of counting, you obviously count away, but you have to count away on, you have to count on this green line and this green line, because this forms this, these triangles. If you spread all of those triangles across a dome, you would, the base um, geometry is known as Pentacus dodecahedron. It's a dodecahedron, but it's been triangulated. To work out the frequency of that, it's just counting the, the subdivisions of a triangle, really. Okay, let's do one more just for the hell of it. This is the, one of my dome plans. It's a three-frequency dome, and um, you can see that it has pentagons, point-to-point, -point, three struts between centers so that makes this a free three frequency icosahedron but everybody knows that so hopefully that's given you some insight and you can wander around um, the internet looking at pictures of geodesic domes and working out what the base geometry is hope this was helpful and uh, we'll see you in the next one